In a world where fortunes rise and fall in the blink of an eye, there are a few rare individuals who see beyond the present. Visionaries who dare to shape the future. Like Thomas Edison, who saw the potential of electricity when others saw only the dark. Or Steve Jobs, who envisioned a world transformed by technology when computers were just a curiosity. These pioneers pushed the boundaries of what's possible. From a small Midwestern town, one man followed in the footsteps of these legends, building an empire from nothing, only to see it nearly collapse in the chaos of the early 2000s. But where others saw defeat, he saw a chance for reinvention. Much like Henry Ford when his early ventures failed, or Walt Disney when his first studio went bankrupt, they didn't give up, they regrouped and returned stronger, reshaping their industries and leaving a legacy that endures to this day. When the world thought Michael Saylor's story was over, he began a new chapter, one that would redefine the very essence of money. Just as Rockefeller redefined oil and Andrew Carnegie reimagined steel, Saylor's vision like that of the great titans before him transcended the immediate crisis. He understood that in every collapse, there's the seed of a new beginning and in every failure a lesson that could pave the way for greater success. This is not just the story of a man who built a fortune, it's the story of a visionary who defined the odds, embraced the future, and in doing so, joined the ranks of those who changed the world forever. Michael Saylor's journey begins in Lincoln, Nebraska on February 4, 1965. Born into a military family, discipline, adaptability, and a sense of duty were ingrained in his him from an early age. His father, an Air Force Chief Master Sergeant, moved the family frequently, exposing young Michael to a variety of places and cultures. This nomadic lifestyle fostered his adaptability and broadened his perspective on the world. From a young age, Michael was captivated by the stars. He dreamt of becoming an astronaut, driven by the allure of exploring the unknown. This passion led him to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 19. Where he pursued a double major in aeronautics and astronautics, as well as science, technology, and society. During his time at MIT, he joined the Theta Delta Chi fraternity, where he met Sanju Bunsal, who would later become the co founder of MicroStrategy. While at MIT, Michael's path began to shift. Although his dream of space exploration remained strong, a new fascination with technology and its transformative potential potential took hold. He became particularly interested in the power of computers and data, not just as academic subjects, but as a tool that could change industries. This newfound interest would soon define his future. After graduating from MIT, Michael began his career as a consultant at DuPont, where he used computer simulations to analyze market dynamics and corporate strategies. It was here that he first saw how data could be harnessed to make smarter decisions and drive business success. The experience planted the seeds of what would become MicroStrategy. In 1989, armed with these insights and a vision for the future, Michael co-founded MicroStrategy with Sanju Bunsal. Initially a consulting firm, MicroStrategy quickly evolved as Michael aimed to create software capable of analyzing vast amounts of data to help businesses stay ahead of the competition. The company's focus on using non-linear mathematics to extract intelligence from data was groundbreaking. The early days of MicroStrategy were anything but easy. Michael and his team worked tirelessly often through the night to develop their first product. Their perseverance paid off in 1992 when MicroStrategy secured a $10 million contract with McDonald's to develop software that could evaluate the effectiveness of its promotions. By analyzing consumers' behavior and sales patterns, McDonald was able to make more informed decisions about future promotions, significantly boosting its operations. MicroStrategy's success continued to grow, culminating in its IPO on June 12, 1998. Priced at $10 per share, the stock doubled on its first day of trading. By the end of 1999, the stock price has skyrocketed, reaching a peak of $333 per share, and Sailor's net worth hit $7 billion, making him the 
the richest person in the Washington DC area. The company was doing so well, they purchased four commercial slots for the Super Bowl, a whooping $8 million at the time. E-business solutions through web, wireless, and voice. Oh, nothing. Just another merger. MicroStrategy. But the euphoria was short-lived. In March 2000, as the dot-com bubble began to burst, MicroStrategy was forced to restate its financial results from 1998 and 1999 after the SEC raised concerns about the company's accounting practices. The stock price plummeted by 91% in just a month and Sailor lost $6 billion in a single day. Then, the largest one-day loss by an individual in history. Despite this staggering blow, Sailor remained unfazed. I signed up to change the world, he famously said. When you are changing the world, who cares about a few billion dollars here or there? By the end of the court case, Saylor and two other MicroStrategy executives agreed to settle accounting fraud charges with the SEC for approximately $7 million. I mean, the truth of the matter is, if you have a billion and you lose six billion, or if you have a hundred million and you lose six billion, if you have 10 million, you lose, you know, your, your lifestyle isn't changing. After this turbulent period, Sailor and MicroStrategy spent the next two decades largely out of the spotlight, focusing on developing business intelligence software for emerging platforms like iPhone and iPad. The company continued to innovate, but the high flying days of the late 1990s seemed a distant memory. Then in 2020, as the world was gripped by the uncertainty of a global pandemic, Sailor found himself at another crossroads. With unprecedented monetary expansion threatening to erode the value of MicroStrategy's substantial cash reserves, he began searching for a solution. The search led him to Bitcoin, the decentralized digital currency that had been quietly gaining traction. Initially skeptical, Saylor immersed himself in research, consulting with experts and engaging with the broader cryptocurrency community. What he discovered was a revolutionary store of value, one immune to inflation and central bank policies. Convinced of Bitcoin's potential, Saylor made a decisive move. In August 2020, MicroStrategy announced the purchase of two $250 million worth of Bitcoin as its primary treasury reserve asset, a groundbreaking decision for a publicly traded company. But Saylor didn't stop there. Over the next several months, MicroStrategy continued to accumulate Bitcoin, eventually amassing over 226,500 Bitcoin, valued at $8.34 billion at the time of this recording. Through this strategy, Saylor transformed MicroStrategy into a Bitcoin vault, with the company's stock price closely mirroring Bitcoin coins fluctuations. Sailor's bold move caught the attention of both Wall Street and Main Street. He became a vocal advocate for Bitcoin, frequently sharing his views through interviews, podcasts, and conferences. Sailor articulated a clear narrative. Bitcoin was digital gold, a safe haven in an increasingly uncertain world. He emphasized how Bitcoin's finite supply and decentralized nature made it an ideal hedge against inflation and currency devaluation. His advocacy helped legitimize Bitcoin in the eyes of institutional investors, many of whom had previously dismissed it as too volatile or speculative. Sailor's actions and influence contributed to a growing wave of corporate and institutional adoption of Bitcoin, leading to a significant increase in its value and stability. Ability. As a result of his deep conviction in Bitcoin, Saylor has amassed a personal net worth just shy of $4 billion, largely due to his personal holdings of 17,732 Bitcoins and his 10% ownership stake in MicroStrategy. This commitment to Bitcoin not only shaped his company's future, but also solidified his own financial standings as one of the most prominent figures in the cryptocurrency world. Beyond his current achievements, Sailor has made bold predictions about Bitcoin's future, envisioning a time when its value could reach millions of dollars per coin. He believes that Bitcoin will become the dominant global store of value, 
eventually surpassing gold and becoming a key asset in every major financial institution's portfolio. But Saylor's journey was not without its critics. Some argued that his approach was risky and there were initial concerns among shareholders about converting so much of MicroStrategy's cash into a volatile asset. Yet Saylor remained steadfast, believing that Bitcoin's long-term potential far outweighed the short-term risk. In the end, Michael Saylor's impact on Bitcoin in the broader financial world was profound. He not only transformed MicroStrategy into a pioneer of corporate Bitcoin adoption, but also played a pivotal role in shifting the narrative around cryptocurrency. By leading with conviction and embracing the uncertainty of the digital age, Saylor helped pave the way for Bitcoin to become a more widely accepted and respected asset in the global financial system.